Hey folks, Jackdaw here. In the world of single player, narrative driven action role playing games, Dragon's Dogma has carved a niche for itself, beckoning players to shape their very own destiny. From customising their player arisen character, to choosing vocations, party members and combat strategies, the series has always thrived on player agency. Now after much anticipation and 12 years since the original, the sequel aptly named Dragon's Dogma 2 opens the gate to an expansive, fantastical world, inviting players to embark on a brand new story. Whether you're a seasoned Dragon's Dogma fan, a curious onlooker, or jumping into this RPG for the very first time, today we're diving into Dragon's Dogma 2. We'll unravel the known plot threads so far, meet key characters, explore the possibility of romance, touch on the kingdom's awaiting discovery, and much more. With this being my first Dragon's Dogma 2 video. Let's kick this one off with a basic overview of Dragon's Dogma before we get into the nitty gritty story top level stuff. In Dragon's Dogma 2, you step into the shoes of the Arisen, a hero whose heart is taken by a dragon, now tasked with defeating the dragon and reclaiming their heart. Amidst exploring the expansive game's world, taking on quests and battling monsters, players find themselves entangled in a geopolitical conflict between two kingdoms. To aid in their endeavour, the Arisen relies on AI-controlled allies known as pawns, functioning as player-controlled avatars that assist in fights, offer enemy intel, and guide through active quests. Players can customise both their own avatar and their own pawns, choosing different genders, appearances, and races. Both the Arisen and pawns adhere to a vocation, a class basically dictating their combat abilities and equipment, each with their own distinctive strengths and weaknesses. And so DD2 unfolds in a seamless open world four times larger than its predecessors map. This time though, existing as a parallel world. Much explaining why we're playing as the Arisen and we're going after said dragon again with more twists. Alright, with Dragon's Dogma 2 overall prefaced there, let's explore the plot. So the Dragon's Dogma 2 website revealed a prophetic tease, stating the story begins in an underground gaol where the dragon's voice echoes in the fog of lost memories. Ascend, Arisen and best me in accordance with the dogma of this world. Betwixt the domains of human and beastrin, a hero must fulfil their forgotten destiny. What dogma does your heart see through your eyes? Tis a tale of one who shall slay the dragon and claim the throne. Pretty much setting up the story and foreshadowing the events of our Arisen. As mentioned briefly in the preface, Dragon's Dogma 2 unfolds in a world parallel to the first. This implies that newcomers who haven't played the original won't feel left out if they're jumping into Dragon's Dogma 2 without any prior knowledge of the first game's lore and story. This parallel world setup also clarifies significant distinctions while introducing the same Arisen character with a seemingly familiar setup and storyline, however with a much deeper narrative than the first game. In this sequel, the Arisen will be part of the plots involving two nations, the human kingdom Kingdom of the Mund and the Beastrin Nation of Batal. A noteworthy twist is the power struggle for the Mund's throne, orchestrated by Disa, the Queen Regent, who has set up a false arisen. The imposter also has their own pawns, creating another mystery for us to uncover alongside defeating the dragon, and the many plot intricacies of dealing with a human nation and its court. Meanwhile, Batal, the Beastrin Nation, views pawns as a source of misfortune and reveres the lambent flame to ward off calamity led by Empress Nadinia. Both kingdoms recognise the dragon as the ultimate threat, but their perspectives on the Arisen and pawns differ, hinting at a deeper exploration of the Arisen's fate amid the beliefs and plots of these nations. As well as DD2 introducing a new race besides Beastrins, we 
we have the elves residing in the sacred arbor who speak in their own language which apparently one of your pawns can translate if trained in elvish additionally a lot of npcs in this world can be engaged with offering quests that allow players to quote deepen their relationships with them which immediately has me thinking about romance now a romance system did exist in the original dragon's dogma but it wasn't as straightforward as your dragon age dialogue wheels or Baldur's gate city break quests instead dd1 used an invisible affinity level for each npc and i'm going to be discussing this topic at full length in a follow-up video but essentially this convoluted romance system meant that you could potentially romance most if not all named npcs which is a really cool feature i don't think i've seen any other game touch on this as much as dd1 did i suppose skyrim system is somewhat similar but the twist of dd1 is that the system was not communicated in the slightest and when i first played dd1 i ended up with celine which was a total and nice surprise at the time to be honest but it's because i didn't even know the game had a romance system and essentially the game does a twist at the end where your love interest is captured by the dragon and it gives you another incentive besides recovering your own heart and as you play through the game you are automatically increasing or decreasing affinity with npcs and the more closer you get to maxing out an npc's affinity the higher chances you have of ending up with them in the end and so brilliant system just not communicated in the slightest at least from my experience and so while we're still uncertain about dd2's romance system i anticipate it to be similar especially if the game is promising deeper relationships with npcs unfolding in side quest content so just a heads up maybe don't spend too much time chatting up with this universe's version of fest that creepy clown unless you fancy him becoming your arisen's new squeeze lord have mercy but yes may that be a warning now branching from romance of course dragon's dogma 2 introduces a completely new cast of characters in fact it would seem that we have shadow or multiverse or whatever you want to call it versions of dd1's characters in dd2 which i think is really cool and a fun twist and they're not the same in the slightest but facilitating similar roles so dd2 promises diverse characters that shape your story let's take a closer look at a couple of the key characters highlighted on the game's website now to illustrate what i mean by these shadow versions of these characters straight off the bat we have ulrika the young leader of melv she has a strong sense of responsibility and trains diligently to protect her people when the arisen was wounded in the dragon's attack she nursed them back to health literally sounds spot on to this universe's version of quitter we briefly mentioned the next one before we have nadinia the leader of batal and high priestess to the lambent flame educated as a royal from an early age she became the head of her nation at a young age she has earned the trust of the people of batal thanks to her kindness and her desire for peace and prosperity in the nation brant is an honest and righteous captain of the palace guard he has been demoted among the royal court for opposing the queen regent concerned for the best interests of the mund he offers his cooperation to the arisen Disa, also mentioned before, queen to the previous sovereign of the Mund, she took charge of the kingdom's government after his death. She schemes to install her beloved son Sven as the next king. She has the grace and hauntiness of royalty and is cool-headed and disdainful. Menela, a beastron who leads the guard of the lambent flame, protecting the high priestess and her acolytes. She is fiercely loyal to the empress Nadinia, who treats her people equally. Following that example, she's concerned about discrimination between races and strives to be more righteous herself. Next up, we have Wilhelmina, proprietress of the Rose Chateau in the Mun's capital. Her patrons include many influential members of the nobility. An enigmatic woman, she combines her enchanting charm with intelligence and open-mindedness. Sven, the beloved son of Queen Regent Disa and a candidate to become the next consul ruler. He is not party to his mother's conspiracies and is concerned with doing what is right. He has a princely elegance but his boyish sincerity sometimes turns to naivety. 
Glinda, a young elf with an air of gentleness and timidity that is rare among the usual haughty elves. He is interested in the tools humans use and is fluent in human language. He despairs his lack of skill in archery, which is essential for an elven guard. Last we have Durian, sister of Glinda. She too hails from the elves' home in the forest depths. A quiet, refined young woman with elegant manners. Due to her older brother's influence, she understands a few words of human language and is kind and welcoming to those of other races. And there we have it, an epic cast of characters shaping our quest. Some shadow versions of characters in DD1, others definitely new original characters. I must admit, if romance is certainly coming back in DD2, I'm already torn between a sweetheart romance with Ulrika having saved my arisen after the dragon fight, versus a more enchanting courtship with Wilhelmina in the human settlement city. But that is an issue for my Arisen to sort out when DD2 drops on March 22nd. With that, we've covered the plot, other characters and the world of DD2 with some hints at romance flung in there. Let me know your thoughts on DD2 stories so far. Do any characters in particular have your eye so far for a potential romance? Stay tuned for future Dragon's Dogma 2 videos as I cover the game up until its launch. Until the next one, I've been Jackdaw and I should go whoa 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 whoa